Would you like to see us break some 60 centimeter Mammut 8.0 climbing slings straight in a girth hitch and a clove hitch? Find out what happens to all this stuff when we break this on our slack snap machine on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx and welcome to my gear room. You can go to hownottohighline.com for the bolting Bible and highlining courses. It's all free, including our slack snap chart. We are going to break some awesome stuff today. Ben Schult donated 10 slings that look in great shape, but they were uh, made in 2014. He only used them a couple dozen times and they basically sat in a closet after he fell in love with sport climbing. So, he donated them and we're going to break test three straight as a reference point on how strong they are compared to what we're going to do after that. Now we've already broke test some of my old slings, but I've kind of used and abused mine. So that'll be fun to see kind of a partially used one versus a really used one. And you can see in our other episode where we break test all that new versus old Mammut slings. And we have sliding X's on that episode. So you guys have requested the girth hitch and clove hitch master points for a while now. And yes, we do listen. We just take a while to get to things, but uh, we need to give the people what they want. We're going to do this and also co-wad anchors. We just spent hundreds of dollars on black diamond gear. We spend 200% of the donations you send to buy stuff to break. But in this case, Ben donated these and we appreciate it. Let's have Bobby show you how to tie these and the benefits, pros and cons, and why you would even do this. Hi, I'm Bobby, and I'm going to show you how to tie a girth hitch master point. Make a U with the sling. And take the bottom here. You've got a loop here. Thread the top through. Then you're ready to clip it into the bolts. So if they're not quite equalized, um, the advantage of this um, style of anchor is that you can equalize it pretty easily. Whereas a BFK, you gotta completely redo it. This also helps keep the carabiner in place and it does take less material. Whereas you can't tie a BFK with only a 60 centimeter sling. Um, so we're gonna find out if this is redundant in case force breaks the sling. It is in theory redundant if the bolt breaks. So that's or what if this- if one of the pieces of webbing is cut. Yeah, one of the, if it gets cut. But usually things break in the knot. And so let's just see what happens when we pull both strands and, and find out how bomber this really is. Next, we are going to show you how to tie a clove hitch master point. Uh, key here is that you're using both strands of the webbing. Lots of different ways to tie this. Um, basically, you make two different loops with the um, material going out either side. You can go to animateddots.com or like any website about climbing to learn clove hitches if you aren't comfortable with them. Um, after you do that, you um, clip your carabiner through and then you can clip it into your bolts. And then we have all the same advantages of the girth hitch. Couple thoughts about this, which is what makes slack snap so much fun. If one bolt were to break, does, Dyneme is pretty slippery, does the entire thing, <laughs> maybe slack snap's better than, it. oh, come apart. We will find out because we always learn so much cool stuff on Slack Snap. And bumping a future episode, this is a Magnetron, is that right? From Black Diamond. From Black Diamond. They're $30 a piece. We just bought three of them. So make sure you smash that like button and make sure you subscribe so you can watch us break really expensive gear that I'd really rather go play with and keep. <laughs> So Bobby and I are going to stop being naughty in here and head over to the slack snap. Welcome to our slack snap machine. It is a 20 foot long rectangle in my garage with all sorts of cool shit that makes it up. 
We have one dynamometer and two dynamometers for redundancy. And we've got a 20 to one pulley system, all right weaved into our uh, pulleys on this side and pulled in two strands into our Costco winch. So we can pull, well, I guess our my PR is 176 kilonewtons or 39,000 pounds. So that is uh, our record so far. I assume this can go up to 50,000 pounds, but I don't really want to test it. The newest addition to Slack Snap is my LED light that's like uh, 5,000 lumens. We basically hung it up here and adjusted it to be the right height. And this is going to make our slow motion tests much higher quality because it is already a low res frame. But this allows us to film 32 times slower than real life at 960 frames per second, which is what makes Slack Snap as cool as it is. So let's start pulling. Oh no, it didn't break at MBS. It broke higher. <laughs> uh, this is rated for 22 kilonewtons. Uh, that's pretty good for a six year old sling. And then our pounds of force is 5,400 pounds of force. Twenty three point five. Huh. And it burps like it always does. It breaks like it always does. We got 23.5 kilonewtons. And this red, well, we didn't have peak force on, which is why we have two dinos. But it's, you know, this one's the better dino anyways. So that's cool. They both broke over MBS. And so now we're going to do the girth hitch. All right, what'd we get? So it broke at the... At the knot? Yep. No way! <laughs> if you don't know, everything fucking breaks in the knot. And like, we had this thing on threads. Like, it was directly on that, like... And it still didn't break there. So what'd we get? What's our number? Okay, so we got 26.2 kilonewtons, which is only a little bit more then pulling it straight so you get twice the benefit and then your knot reduces it by half. And that's almost good math. And it broke in the knot. Ooh, ooh, feel that, that's warm. That's crazy warm. It's kind of fun. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't smell like nylon. Uh, nylon's pretty smelly. Um, so got, wow, a little bit higher, 28.6 kilonewtons or 6,300 pounds of force. Basically, if you put enough force on this, it's not redundant. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty good anchor for a lot of things and 28.6 kilonewtons isn't bad. Um, let's try some clove edges, see what happens. While Bobby is resetting this, let me cover a few things. This is not science, this is entertainment. And uh, we're only doing two of each test at this point and like, we're just seeing what happens. When you try to do real scientific experiments and really minimize the variables, it is boring for you and us. And so we don't really care about that. We just kind of want to see what's going to happen when you just pull shit. So keep in mind the difference between what we're doing and what people who do standards, create standards and the MBS and the Sigma stuff. It's like, that's a whole different world. This is like us doing a shitty job of the slow-mo guys for, you know, climbers. So know the difference.
Have we achieved redundancy? Kind of looks like it. Oh, it broke in the knot. Here, um, hold on. So we got 26.3 kilonewtons and 5,850 pounds of force. Let's take, um, peak, well, there's no force on it now. Oh. Um, peak force is on again. Go for it until it uh, comes apart. All righty, it will slip, but it took 4.5 kilonewtons to slip. Interesting. Dyneema is a very slippery um, material. material. Dyneema, by the way, is the same material as these soft shackles. Is that neat? Okay, so our slings still attached, uh, sort of. It should not be it's, attached. It's just pinched there. It's pinched. All right, so let's just, all right, hold on. Let's start with this. 26.85 kilonewtons, or 5,900 pounds of force. Um, let's zero one of these. Okay, pull. That actually took 6.6 .6 kilonewtons. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with how much that took, um, but it still slips. It's not truly redundant. This is a line scale two from linegrip.com. We are going to enter this into the system now because we are gonna do a live reading and then we're gonna do a peak force on this other dyno because I'm going to cut, in this case the clove hitch, uh, while it's under tension to see if the rock rubbing it, the bolt broke or whatever, and not just like 26 kilonewtons of force and see if it's truly redundant or if Dyneema just slips out. The reason we use kilonewtons is because that is a measurement of force. I do have the pounds of force on this dynamometer here, but that's not really uh, the scientific way of doing it. We uh, in America will generally understand this more, but our gear is rated for, let's say a carabiner is rated for 22 kilonewtons. So it's nice to know what your slings are rated out or your rope and everything is in kilonewtons. You probably don't weigh one kilonewtons. That's 225 pounds of force. But if, well, maybe- Bobby does. Maybe Bobby does. I, I'm like 0.8 kilonewtons. But if I were to fall and shock load something, I'm gonna generate four, four and a half kilonewtons. How do I know that? Because we did shock loading as a myth and that is a super rad episode you gotta check out. But anyways, it measures a force because obviously him standing on a scale versus me shock loading a scale, it's gonna generate different stuff. So just to explain how these numbers work if you're not familiar with some silly newtons. We are at 4.3 kilonewtons Oy! on the rock that is rubbing. Oh God, oh God. This is abrasion. This is a, oh, a bolt breaking. Oh God, oh God, oh God. This, this is scarier than I thought. No, I'm halfway through. That's cool. Oh God, oh, okay, not so bad. Is this redundant? Bobby, start pulling. Should we even say anything? <laughs> Granted, it took seven-ish kilonewtons, but you can generate that. Um, and the peak force obviously was seven kilonewtons because it's higher than when we first cut it. But, huh, that is a very interesting test. Shall we do the clove, or is this the clove hitch? This is the clove. Oh, uh, let's do the girth hitch. We're at 4.03 kilonewtons on a girth hitch with a new knife. 
which makes all the difference. Ooh, scary. All right, pull it, Bobby. So that's, that was like four, four-ish kilonewtons was what we were getting. Now it is probably could have a different result if you did cyclic loading rather than just like you're, you're pulling on it. Also, um, this could be different for nylon slings. If you want to see us do the same test with nylon slings, put in the comments below or that, or cordelette, yeah. Put in the comments below that you're uh, already donated 20 bucks to the cause. So like, or hey, if you got nylon slings sitting around like, you know, he did, like we could totally break your slings. But anyways, um, yeah, put in the comments below if you want us to see us do different things or different variations with this. But I find this to be very interesting that this is um, not really redundant and that it just starts slipping. It's, uh, this number, we started at six kilonewtons before I cut it. It settled down to four by the time I did cut it and never did achieve more than that again. How strong is this sling if I only cut a little bit of it? Sometimes we get nicks in our slings and they can be kind of scary to use. So I'm just gonna put like a nick that I would consider still using my sling if I saw what I have right here. Now we're gonna pull it and see how much strength was reduced. Well, that's interesting. That's the cut. It didn't break at the cut. Well, and it also broke at like 23.6 kilonewtons. So basically we got basically full strength after I cut through, as you can see here, um, just that outer red, um, color. Now, I don't think it's safe to use slings that you depend your life on if they're cut like this. Like, it's your life. Like, it's not worth it, but it's sure interesting. So there, there's my disclaimer. Okay, our last test. Let's uh, cut it a little bit more. Right now, we've got one kilonewton on it. And in between these two Sharpie marks is where I'm going to put it about, it's, uh, it's almost about 30%, I think, right there. What do you think? Like I would consider using this sling if I had no other options. The question is, do you use a knot to bypass this? At what point do you lose more strength? Cause the knots like takes at least 50% out of a Dyneema sling versus just having this little nick in here. Yeah, yeah, gnarly. <laughs> Okay, uh, where's my Sharpie? No, <laughs> no way. No way, bro. Woo, those dinos are like spot on to each other. That's pretty cool. Uh, 4650, um, no way. Okay, we broke other slings in another video where we put an overhand knot and reduced it like by half. It's it, I, it's really hard to say a conclusion on here so you don't sue me, but like this would be better to highlight, like not highlight, to climb with than to stick a knot in it. Like, what do you guys think? Put in the comments below if you think that's insane for me to even mention out loud because obviously that seems, uh, I don't know, slack religious to say something like that. What would you do, Bobby? I'd be really put, tempted to bypass this with a nod if I saw this when I was. Uh huh.